Hello everyone, my name is Jerry. Online I'm known as Jerry PH and my blog slash website is www.accordionmemories.com. Today we're going to be taking a look at the new firmware upgrade for the Zoom F4. But before we actually get down and do it, let's just briefly run through those options or the new features that this firmware now offers us. The first feature that Zoom integrated right now is the ability to monitor input signals. Now, previously we were unable to do this. We were unable to listen to tracks that while we were recording, but now we have the ability to monitor tracks that have not been set to record. And these can be input to the prefader level screen and you can listen to them. This is super convenient because we can use the tracks as maybe return inputs. And I can even make modifications to these tracks as you can see on this screen. Another new feature, feature number two, is the new kind of input limiter. Previously, uh, we did have input limiters and these were digital limiters and they didn't really work 100%. Let me explain why. Under the old system, when we didn't have any kind of a limiter, we'd get all kinds of clipping happening and everything else. With the uh, limiter in place, the initial peak, which would trigger the limiter, would sometimes get through and that would cause us all kinds of little issues. Also, because they were, they were not analog limiters, but rather digital limiters, what happened was that even though these sections were lowered, they were often still clipped and had issues. This has been somewhat addressed with the more advanced limiter. Let's take a look at the before. In the before, the sound would come through and it would be clipped and be recorded and such and everything. But with the new version, everything is saved. Now, Again, these are not analog uh, limiters. These are digital limiters. They don't work as well. However, this is a nice improvement now in that the F4 will listen ahead and try to cut down on the uh, volume or the level enough so that the sudden peaks are lowered and they do this by uh, looking ahead and they look ahead approximately one millisecond. So the advantage is we can now remove all the clips that might be unwanted. The bad side is we've now increased the latency of, this, of the uh, recording by one millisecond. Auto mix is a new feature, and this is feature number three that's new to this firmware. And it's kind of a cool feature for people who'd like to do interviews. Normally when I have, let's say, three or four people talking each into their separate microphones during the times that they're not recording we're gonna their microphones are still picking up crowd noises ambient noises background noise and what this little feature does is to the person that's not speaking it cuts down or attenuates their microphone a certain amount so it reduces the, the possibility of feedback it lowers the background noise or crowds or any fans or something like that that you might have close to the person and the sound quality degradation due to differences like phase differences or distances between the different multiple mics that's also reduced so that's a good little feature if you're doing interviewing type scenarios the next feature in this new firmware is the ability to boost the headphone output now i've never had any problem with this in the past However, some people, when they hear someone say, oh, it's not quite loud enough, um, they sort of say, oh, this is a deal breaker and whatnot and all kinds of things happen. Well, Zoom does listen to its people and they actually went out and gave us the ability to digitally boost the output of the headphone by an additional 24 dB. Now, I've never had a need for additional volume in my in my uh, headsets. Matter of fact, it's I, I can't remember any time I went even close to near maximum levels. But that could be a function of the headphone that I'm using or the headphones that I use. 
and other people who might be using either headphones with higher ohm ratings, higher resistance, might have lower volumes, this function will be great for them. The next feature in this firmware is the ability to set signals that are sent to the output jack. So we can do a little bit more in terms of the routing. So in version 3.0, when we had the advanced limiter feature added, we can now set the type of the signal that's sent to the headphone output or the main out or the sub out. So to either pre-fader or post-fader, we can do this on a per track basis. Another nice new feature that this firmware adds is the ability to correct time code errors. Now, when the Zoom F4 is left on, the internal time code is extremely accurate and for long periods of time. However, when you turn it off or turn it on or you leave it off for a longer period of time, when you turn it back on, sometimes you lose that synchronization. So what they've done now is we have the ability to now calibrate the real time clock to the internal time code calibration. And this will greatly increase its accuracy after the unit's been turned off and turned back on again. Next on the list of new features, we can now record to the SD card and to the audio interface at the same time. So this is kind of a new feature and it's kind of cool. And for those of us that need additional redundancy, this is a great little feature. Now, this feature is not without its limitations and it introduces a couple of caveats that we have to be aware of. First of all, we are not allowed to record at higher sample rates than 48 kilohertz. So we're sort of limited to 44.1 or 48 kilohertz. To most of us, not an issue, but to those of us that like to record at the higher levels, like the 96 or 192, this means that we cannot do this feature. And another thing is that when we do the uh, audio interface uh, recording and SD card recording at the same time, we're going to increase latency by two full milliseconds. Now, this can cause some issues for some people. For example, they might not have the ability to monitor the sounds accurately. So if you're listening through one headphone and the sound coming through there is different from the sound that you're hearing through your right ear, which might be uncovered, that may uh, cause a bit of uh, a delay between the two and sort of uh, a latency, latency sound. So basically, this is something we need to know when we're using this function. Great function but limits us to a lower quality recording levels and incre increases the latency by two milliseconds. So that's just a brief overview of the new features in this version 3.0 firmware. Let's get down and get this installed. Before we actually go down and start the installation of the firmware, we need to know where to go to get it. So let's go over to the Zoom website located at www.zoom-na.com. From there, we click on the support and downloads. Let's scroll down to the area that has the files for us. And that would be the F4, so we click here. This brings us to the main page of where we have the downloads available for us. Okay, ah, they added some nice little media, awesome. So we then proceed to download our um, files. I like to just download everything. So that way I have a list of all the latest stuff available to me. However, for the purposes of this video, this is what we're looking for right here. So the F4 system version three, and that's our firmware update for the Zoom F4. Now, I don't need to tell you how to do a download this because I have already downloaded the file and that's going to be right here. And what we're going to do, the process is we are looking for one particular file inside here and then on the SD card that goes into slot number one of our Zoom F4, we put this particular bin file in there. So I'm going to open this up. 
I'll open this up and I'm going to look for the F4 system bin. I just click and drag that over and this goes onto the SD card of my file. Now the next part is where we're going to actually insert the card and then start it up in a very specific manner that initiates the firmware update. Let's go to that step right now. All right, one of the first things we need to do is to first find where slot number one is. So I open up the back cover. This is where the batteries would normally go, but right above here, this is slot one, this is slot two. This is where we take our SD card and insert it into slot number one. Let's close that down. And we're ready to move on to the next step. First thing we need to do is take a look at the current version. All right, this is where we're going to press the play button and the power on at the same time. So I press and hold the play, power on. It's looking for that first little option. Let's zoom in a little bit. We're now going to select the yes and it starts updating. And we are complete. Now, we're going to turn this off. Let's power it on. Okay. Now we have to find out where the option for Firmware update successful. Thank you very much for watching our video. Have a great day. See you soon. Bye bye for now.